got some bobcat work going on. Lots of fun. We're gonna get her yet. So as you can see, this is really starting to come together now. We've got the, the clay spread in this area. So we'll put some, obviously we'll dress it up with gravel, but this will be the longer driveway into the, uh, the three doors at the front of the shop. We're getting a real nice grade. This beautiful clay that I've been bringing in. We're probably, I don't know, 40, 50 tandems, but we've got a nice grade for the, uh, for the floor of the shop. So we'll put a, eventually put a concrete slab on grade. So we need to get the laser levels out and make sure we get this perfectly level. But you can see that we've got a, a grade going off the back there. Here's the, the front corner and the back corner. So again, 40 deep and then 60 wide. You can see the back post over there by the, uh, by the washed rock. We still got a little more clay to bring in to bring up that front corner, but it's looking real nice. It's gonna be a nice home for my, for my toys. And then of course that's graded down. So the water will head forward and then out into the, to the drain ditch in the front of the subdivision or front of the lot. Still got some work to do on the road. Want to grade it up and then angle it off so all the water sheds. But yeah, it's really coming together now. <laughs> I'm very excited. All right, enough dreaming about a future shop. Let's get back to working on trucks. Oh, there's a road up north of Fairbanks to come a Kamikaze Trail, well known. It's a challenge to any truck driver who really likes to carry their own. Frequent wrecks and traffic jams caused delays that threatened the tight schedule. But the truckers matched the frantic pace of pipeline construction, hauling in 19,000 loads of pipe and over 3 million tons of supplies. Oh, who ever thought that a bunch of black landers would be trucking on the Kamikaze Trail? Well, like I always say, measure once, cut twice. I didn't take uh, into consideration when I was measuring these out and cutting them, I was just kind of doing it on the quick, that uh, they need to be pushed all the way in and the threads will tighten it all the way forward. So they're a couple inches short. So it's a good thing I got a lot of this stuff. <laughs> oh, well, live and learn. Maybe I'll be able to use those short lines somewhere else. And if not, maybe my wife can use them to beat me for wasting money on airlines. <laughs> there, that should work. Okay, so you get the idea. So I'll keep working on these, but I like the way this, this, uh, this came out. Now I was thinking of putting springs on the top ones here because there's going to be a load on them as they make a bend to come to the relay. But I'm worried that they're going to be too high that might interfere with a, a deck plate I plan to put on there. So we'll see. We'll run the line and see how, how much of a bend is there. And I might have to put a spring on the top as well. But 
Hope that gives an appreciation. These are great fittings, but they take a long time because you gotta, especially when you got them right, right beside each other, you can only get like a quarter of a turn and they, uh, you gotta thread them all the way down with a wrench. So they're, uh, they're a time consuming beast, but they look pretty sharp once they're, uh, once they're done. So I was just looking at the existing, the old one, and there's a 90 degree elbow, which makes total sense rather than trying to have the line go up and then down. So I looked through my collection and I found one elbow, but I'll have to go back to fork gearing and another. But as I'm kind of doing this, I, I do need some additional fittings. I found I don't have a coil one for the quarter inch pipe thread for that guy. So I'll just keep a list of things that I need and we'll uh, we'll just keep going here. And then I'll run and get uh, run and get the missing parts. And hopefully for the final time, I can uh, finish up the airlines back here and move on to something a little more fun. <laughs> Look. Two utes. To what? What? Did you say utes? Yeah, two utes. Oh, I don't feel so bad now. I was able to reuse some of the ones that were too short for the front so they didn't go to waste. But the trick that I figured out is you mount them in the one end and you make them a little longer if you're going to cut a fresh one, a little longer than you think you need it. And then you bring it up to the connector. And then if it's still, if you don't like the arc or it's still a little too long, you can just trim an inch at a time and just nibble off what you need until you get the exact spot that you want. So... These ones are actually going to work just fine without adjustment, but I think that's the that's the right way to do it. Looking sharp. So I splurged. I got the Arctic air brake lines rated for minus 54 C. So when Project Snowman's all done, we'll be able to run her up the Dalton. Trucks were kept running 24 hours a day to keep engines from seizing in the sub-zero cold. Each truck burned 80 gallons of fuel a night just idling. With no camps to shelter them, the men slept in their poorly heated cabs and struggled to keep warm. So here's a good example of one that, that I just set up. I, I screwed in the one end there and I cut more than I need. So the way that it is right now, I don't really like that. So it can probably go a little shorter. So we'll snip off I don't know, a couple inches here. And then give it another try. These cutters are invaluable. Something like that. You want to make sure your lines don't rub on anything because it'll uh, wear a hole through. And actually in some spots where it goes underneath the fifth wheel there, I'm going to have to take some old rubber line and put it as kind of a, a wear barrier and then zip tie it wherever it's going to actually be in contact because it's vibrating going down the road it'll quite easily wear a hole through the line and that's uh that makes for a bad day so i wonder maybe uh maybe a little shorter again start too long and then just trim to make it work so something like that i think is going to be just perfect so just keep picking away at this little by little bit by bit quite simple you just put the collar on there's a there's a tapered end and that goes to the fitting so you put that guy on there and then of course that's the threaded end and the hose just slides over the uh the end there and you just tighten it up and as you tighten it it collapses that collar and that provides the seal so you can actually once you once you collapse it and compress the uh, the collar you are able to take the line off and then put it back on but if you have to cut the line or do anything else like that or replace the line you got to get a new uh you got to get a new crush collar and there also is uh there's adapters these fairview adapters they can have uh, uh double female where you can actually if you have a cause a wear or a hole in the line something like that you can just cut the line and put that connector on there and you don't have to run a whole new line so these are uh these are a great uh, a great setup they're a little pricey and as i was saying they take a little time to to get set up right but 
once they're in there, they're good to go. And they, uh, I'm a big fan. I think they work well. So this is actually working out pretty good. I'm able to burn up all these uh, hoses that I cut too short at the, at the start of the video here. So I need a real short one for the park brakes that go to this relay. So we'll probably cut it something like that. Yeah, so if you cut a few too short, you just keep them around and you probably use them up before you get all the airlines on the whole truck done. I was actually looking under the cab and boy, oh boy, that's a, that's quite a nest of, of hoses. I don't remember that many being on the peat. That's why I'm surprised there's so many more, but there was an air dryer on this truck and a couple other nuances that are just a little bit different, but I might, similar to wiring, when you go in and, and clean up old wiring, sometimes you can go in and delete some of the, the lines that don't need to be there. Oh, I didn't tighten that one up yet. So we'll try and clean it up as we go and just replace them one at a time. And uh, yeah, slowly but surely we'll get there. Here I go again, spending more money. Man, I'd sure like to buy that thing if I could afford it. Built tough, our standard of quality is unmatched in the transport trailer industry and certified for quality assurance. Left. We'll get a bag of these guys. And what else do we need? So these ones are bigger for half inch lines. Of course, we're doing three eighths, and then it's got the various fittings. And those are the connectors I was talking about if you need to fix a leak. see what I'm looking for. Maybe they got more in the back. Man, they should sell this stuff by weight. 30 pounds of brass, $200. So one of my fans from Ontario sent me a bunch of Kenworth coffee mugs and really grateful for that. Thanks so much. And he also sent me uh, the instructions similar to that for an 18 speed. <laughs> Trying to suggest that we should probably swap this, uh, this old 13 out and Boy, now would sure be the time. I mean, look how easy it would be. You can access all the bell housing bolts. And if you had forks, you could just chain hoist it down, but uh, we'll leave well enough alone for now. I would like to eventually get this to an 18, similar to what uh, Easy Rider did, but for now we'll leave it as a 13. And stop being such a squirrel, and I'm gonna try and stay focused on the airline. So We'll continue to swap out the ones that need them. The ones under the cab, I mean, they're dirty, but they don't look worn. And they're all the braided lines, which are actually stronger than the, the lines that I'm putting on or, or more uh, wear resistant. So unless something's obvious like this one here where there's a wear spot, I don't think there's any need to replace them. So we'll, uh, we'll just kind of go from, from where they are damaged or where the fittings are, and then we'll run new line from there back to our back to our tanks figure we'll also go ahead and get those rotten uh pipes out of there and i got the new one sitting over there so maybe we'll uh give myself a break from from airlines and fittings and we'll do something a little different straight pipe so looks like i'm not gonna be able to mount these today because look at that there's a little daylight down there yeah didn't even notice before rotten right through so i'll actually i gotta just rebuild it and do this right we'll just go right from the from the duct tape on the turbo 
we'll get a new pipe and go all the way back because this stuff's just burnt right out. And all you guys out there with your air ride cabs and your air ride sleepers, this is how we do it old school. The bumps from the road go up through those leaf springs, down the frame, and right up here, right through the seat and right into your back. <laughs> they have the strength and stamina demanded by Dodge dependability. Bolted to the body floor are many... And obviously the primary tank was, was sitting on the seat here, or on the floor underneath the passenger seat. And I think here's one of the, the primary lines that goes back to the relays. But it goes through this guy here, and I don't know if this was a, a de device designed to catch water, because there is a drain underneath there that I think you just reach under the truck and pull and let out all your water. But it's seized and it's it's probably all full of rust. So what I'm thinking of doing is just deleting that, and then we'll just put a uh, we'll put a dr uh, a pull drain on the bottom of the primary tank, so I could just reach under from this side and grab that cable, give it a tug, and actually release all the moisture from the primary tank. I think that'll work just fine. I know, I know, I need an oxyacetylene. Get it eventually. Give that a try. Come on, you. More heat and a bigger wrench. Up all that oil with this turbo has been blubbering into the exhaust. There's a light on me here. I guess it ain't gonna go anywhere. Okay, try that now. Always the little things. What I thought was gonna be a five minute project. Just swap out those two little. Oh, that's not gonna fit. Two little exhaust extensions. Okay, come on. Yes! There it goes. Nice. Okay. Okay. That's gonna be toasty. Careful. Safety. There you go. Exhaust temperature probe. Still cooking. Okay, and now I'm gonna try and get this bracket off. I mean, worst case, we'll just break it. I'm not too worried about it. Is this overkill or what? <laughs> and sheared right off. I guess that was to be expected. Baked on there. This turbo's had some some pretty hot suppers at one point. Boys that owned it before me hauling horses were making this truck just sing, I'm sure. This thing was probably red hot. Yeah, so that's not good. So we'll get a new piece of pipe. And that was rotten too. And it was slobbering a lot. Now some guys were commenting in an earlier video that that slobber might just be because this thing's been idling a lot and hasn't really been driven. And I am curious to check the uh, the turbo end play and side to side, and I can't even feel it click at all. It's spinning freely. There doesn't seem to be any end play forward and aft. I think this turbo, as dirty as it is, I think it's still good, I hope. Yeah, boy, that, that spins beautiful. There's not any tolerance there. All right, well, we'll clean that up and get some high temp paint on there and we'll get some new parts for the exhaust. So now that this pipe's out, I'm just taking a look at stuff that you normally can't get easy access to. And, and look at that, the, the heater core wire. That, that thing would probably show a little resistance on an ohm meter. What do you think? Needs replacing? Then I also looked, they've got actually an oil heater as well. 
so they could uh, they could plug in and heat up the coolant and heat up the oil, which is pretty smart. So we'll get those both replaced. Should probably drain the coolant, and replace the lines as well. And now that this pipes out, it's probably a good time to put a little original uh, Cummins cream color paint on this engine. Man, when you do one quick job, it usually creates another three. The joys of restorations. So looking at that old tank, it was kind of rusty and I thought, you know what? I really don't want to put that in there um, because it's going to be in the way. I have to get it in there to actually finish the airline so I can start the truck and move it and turn it around. And then it's going to be right in the way as I do the interior. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to, for now, I'm going to steal the one of the secondary tanks and the hoops. And I wanted to see if I could fit it in in this uh this area that's not actually being used for anything if you remember from an earlier episode when i took this cover off this is supposed to be a toolbox but someone i guess deleted that along the way or maybe that came that way from the factory but i thought you know what that's a perfect place for an air tank so why don't we see if we can drill some holes and uh and mount the hoop so here goes nothing and try and get it in here Ugh. I just think it'll make for a, a cleaner installation. Oh. Getting tired. some elbows out of these ports to point back to where the airlines are coming in but I think this is gonna work it's gonna work quite nice oh, so we'll button that up and I think I'm just about ready to call it a day and go inside and pour some Jack Daniels and watch some old uh, watch some old 80 shows <laughs> 